All right, so we are building this throne. Look at that icy goodness. And this here, this is um, pretty much the core skill that we're going to need for this throne. Um, uh, you can see just off to the side there, that is a love seat. Uh, and I am working on some black pool noodles. I got these from foamnoodle.com, who uh, pretty awesome company. Um, and I just I love that they're already black. I didn't have to paint them at all for this. So this process, I'll show you guys a little bit better down the road. Um, but what I'm basically doing is I'm making the pool noodles look like tree branches. You can see I'm splitting them uh, just to get more mileage out. And it's a little bit easier to work with a, a little bit less noodle, in all honesty. And I'm kind of, I'm cutting wedges out. I'm cutting a long wedge out. See how it's got those two spikes now? So now I heat it. And by twisting it, rolling it on the table, this is one of the first ones that I did. I think rolling it on the table is the most effective, and I don't really do that much here. But warm it, and then it just looks a little, it looks a lot twiggier. And what I'm really going for is those briar brambles in, um, is it Snow White? I think it's Snow White, where she turns into the dragon, and there's all these briars and stuff. Yeah. But anyway, like that's one. And we have to make like 60 for this. This is the love seat that we started with. We already raised it up because normally they're a little too low. We're not going for long-term comfort. We're, we're going for uh, we need to sit down and get up quickly because it's going to be for pictures for Krampus. And I am spray painting it black. I'm just using regular spray paint. I'm not using upholstery spray paint. Uh, it's going to be fine. I'm using 2X spray paint. Uh, I think that's by Rustoleum, but I'm I'm just painting this love seat. Uh, now Rue is measuring the back of the couch, and he is going to be doing the upholstery, and I'll show a little bit of that later. But that's you know that's so simple. But I didn't have to show him how to do upholstery at all. He completely knew how to do it, which was great. I am going to be focusing, obviously, on all the spots they can see. Uh, I will paint the back of the love seat later. Uh, this did take two coats to get rid of the checker pattern. Um, and we went with a love seat instead of a single chair because that way you have the option. A lot of times we get uh, couples up for pictures and stuff, and that way the guy can sit beside you and the girl sits on your knee or, or however you do it. Sometimes the guy sits on your knee. Sometimes it's two guys, they both want a knee. Sometimes they fight. Times are crazy. But anyway, uh, look at me, painting a love seat black. That's what we're doing. And uh, I kind of, I know, instead of reupholstering the couch, all right, our option, we decided for speed, we would paint it black and then just cut plywood, upholster the plywood where we wanted it, and attach it to the love seat. And then the bottom cushion, we put a piece of plywood on the bottom of it underneath it so that we can wrap the new upholstery around and staple in. Um, I probably could have sped up. This is just, I'm just spray painting this. But who knows? Maybe this is important to you. It is kind of therapeutic. Um, you can see how we built the riser right there. That was a good shot for that. How we built those little risers to raise it up. That raised it up about three and a half inches, uh, and that means that sitting down and standing up is going to be a little bit faster. No one needs help getting out of your couch. And, you know, time is important in these kind of events. All right, and here, I was actually filming me, but uh, you're going to get a lot of me making tree branches. Uh, in the background, I saw Rue, and you see Rue doing a great job right now of dulling a razor blade on a concrete floor. He's doing a great job of that. Um, it, it is probably the best place to work. Uh, <laughs> but uh, here he's cutting the wedges out of the sides. And that way, when he folds it over and staples it, there's not a huge amount of bunching on that corner there. And the fabric is going to be just the same, only it's going to extend three inches out. Here you get a shot of Rue working in the background on the upholstery. And I am making tree branches until my hands fall off. 
Uh, I think we needed like 60 to 70 of these guys for the look that, that I wanted. Um, I kind of had this planned out in my head. I didn't draw it out on paper or anything, but the design was pretty simple. All right, I have them cut in half. And I'm, I don't do the same thing every time, but I'm just going to cut all the, let's cut a V out of this one. This one I ended, you know, like an inch from the end. And this one I'll make sure I go all the way up to the top. I want to deal with this piece first. Heat it. Don't burn your hand. Roll it. Take the end. Roll it. And that gives me my little spike. And to attach it, I just cut it on the metal. And now I can just glue that down right there with heat. So. There's not like one, it cools down fast, so you yeah. have to be fast, but there's not like one mistake you can make to like kill it, aside from like overheating and baking it. And now I'm looking for my sharp corners, like I don't like that sharpness right there. And I want all of the action, like all of these guys, to be in the top third for sure. That's why everything will be seen mostly? Yeah. Okay. That looks good. See how that just bonds on? Yeah. Yeah. You just have to do it quick, right? And now, yeah, so, really fast. So you have to hit both sides and put it on? Yeah, both sides. If you want a real bend in it, it's easier, one, two, three, four, just to kind of gotcha. give it that bit. If I go too soon, it'll stretch apart, it's still like liquid for a bit. And now again, I just kind of want to melt it a bit to give it more organicness. Took away the, the pool noodle look. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned we had a lot of these to make, so I tricked Ivan into making some. And uh, I tricked Corey into making some. I really, uh, Tom Sawyered it with the picket fence. Of course, I had to make a bunch, and that's Corey prepping for me. Uh, that's Corey Case and Ivan Roche. Uh, two awesome guys at Dark Hour. And uh, I'm making a bunch. And then I conned Alex and Kim into making some. So they made some. Uh, and so part of the look of this is just to have the Gruss von Krampus uh, down at the bottom. And uh, Rue did some of that. I didn't let him finish because <laughs> I wanted to put the branches on. And uh, here you can see we're, we're attaching them... Uh, to the fabric with hot glue. And if you stab the hot glue gun into the pool noodle a little bit. And then drag that hot glue over to the fabric. It stays really well because you've made a little plastic peg once that glue cools down. Uh, like I mentioned, we needed like 60 or 70 of them because I wanted it really nice and full. Um, so to the fabric we did that. And then in the back we mostly uh, screwed them down. And the hot glue that we're using... It's not a special hot glue for polyethylene foam. It's it's a regular hot glue. Uh, it, it's the real cheap stuff because we were at Dark Hour shop and not my shop. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, this is just, it's all branch placement now. And now we, we take a step back and what looks good and, and where do we put them. Um, and I almost wanted a, like the Game of Thrones throne look 
but instead of swords, it, it's tree branches. And they're all sort of gnarled and, and blended together. Uh, you can see the reupholster here, obviously, that Rue did. And that is just a piece of plywood with the foam on top of it. And then we uh, screwed it through the back uh, to hold it on. And then he reupholstered the bottom cushion. And that gives it a whole brand new look. The fabric we use, it's like a crushed velvet, but it's a little sturdier. Um, and that striking red and black is a really good color scheme. And we turned the black a more holiday band design-wise by adding the frost and the, uh, the snow on it. This is, this is what we're doing. I mean, um, this is something, um, there's, it's a design element that I call, you know, awesomeness through many, uh, because it's many of the same thing over and over and over again, repeated. And, you know, some designs work because there's like dragon scales, you know, a little patch of dragon scales doesn't look cool. When you put scales over the whole dragon, you know, that's a, that's a nice, unique look. Um, no matter what medium you do it in. And here, you know, we're just patching in uh, some with the hot glue gun. And Rue has a heat gun in his hand. So we're heat bonding still. We're just heat bonding um, other pieces across all of them to kind of bind them together. Make it all nice and strong by heat bonding pieces across it. And it gives you kind of that tangled look too. Uh, if you look at the arms, you can see that there's, you know, a branch that starts below the cushion and goes up and around. And Ruth's putting on one right now. Uh, and that kind of blends into the back of the chair. And it just helps the whole look. It makes the arms not seem quite so, you know, well, they're love seat hands. Uh, so here's uh, Rue. This took him probably an hour to do the lettering. Uh, 15 minutes of that was painting. And the other 45 was him complaining that he didn't have a pinstripe brush because Rue is a car guy and does car pinstriping. But apparently, you need special brushes for that. All right, so this next bit, uh, this is the kind of snow. It's poly flake snow. I like the iridescent poly flake snow. Um, some of it looks like this. Uh, Hobby Lobby has their own brand. And I'm putting on spray adhesive. I'm doing a great job of blocking everything I'm doing from the camera. But I'm applying spray adhesive. Any kind really works fine. I happen to be using Loctite. And then I'm sprinkling on this uh, poly fl flake fake snow. And that is what's giving the frosted look. And we will blow off the excess here later. But just having that icy look, I, mean, I think it, it elevates it so much and it looks beautiful. Um, if I wasn't doing this, I would at least gloss all the branches and that would kind of get you that. But right now, I am the snow glitter fairy and I am distributing it all over this chair. I even do some on the back of the cushion. Uh, because if this were out in the snow, somewhat might land and pile up there. And I did hit that with the uh, spray adhesive first. And now I'm just going to blow off all the excess from the seat and from the branches. Anything that's not glued down, of course, I want to send away. Okay, so we need to go in there with black spray paint and see inside of those boards. Yep. We'll have to paint those. I'm really impressed with this thing. Yeah? yeah? That's our love seat from the break room. So, I have been in love with this style of tree branch, like black branches with glitter on them from the movie Legend. Oh, yeah. Like, that's where I first saw it, and I'm like, that's a good look. So, Learn how to heat bond the polyethylene foam, the pool noodles. Learn how to do that before you jump on this project. Please don't try to glue this together. Polyethylene foam doesn't glue very well. This is a great look. It's a great finished project, um, but it would be a nightmare to try to glue this. Use the heat bonding. Practice. Definitely practice this technique, but most importantly, 
Go make stuff. Thanks everybody for watching. This here, these are my Patreon supporters. We have a Patreon here at Stilt Beast Studios. And these are the fine folks who keep me well stocked with pool noodles and the shop with toilet paper. Uh, very important. Um, all kinds of things are possible because of the support that I get from Patreon. Including the system that I am editing this video on right now. Thank you everyone. And I can't wait to show you all the cool stuff that we're doing this next year. So much glitter, so little time.